Okay, now we're going to talk about the tachycardias, PALS 2010. So if your patient's heart is racing fast, they have poor perfusion, maybe altered mental status, shock, or low blood pressure, but they have a pulse, then you're going to open your patient's airway, assist their breathing, our standard ER thing of IVO2 monitor, and if you can, get an EKG. And the reason that you're getting the EKG is because you want to know if your patient has a wide QRS. Now, in kids, a wide QRS means anything greater than 90 milliseconds. And the QRS is either going to be narrow or it's going to be wide. If it's narrow, you probably have either sinus tach or SVT. If it's wide, it's probably ventricular tachycardia, which could be stable or not stable. So this is the basic breakdown here, uh, and it really comes down to what kind of rhythm you have, so you have to check the QRS, narrow or wide, and then we determine which of these three rhythms we have. Now let's take a look at each one of these in turn. So let's start with the narrow rhythm of sinus tach. So some of the features of sinus tachycardia are, number one, you're going to have a history that is consistent with it. So maybe you have someone who has a fever or they're dehydrated, and uh, there's been something that led them to develop sinus tach. If you look at their waveforms, you'll notice that there will always be P waves, and they're always present. And while the heart rate may vary, they'll remain tachycardic, but maybe they're 140, then they go up to 160, then 150, and so the heart rate may vary, but the PR interval will stay the same. And we will be contrasting this with SVT, or supraventricular tachycardia, but uh, for the sinus tach, it's hard to get as fast as those, so... Uh, in infants, the rate's usually less than 220, and for kids, it's less than 180. And the treatment for this is easy. You want to treat the reversible causes. So if they're hypovolemic, like they lost a lot of fluid, they're dehydrated, then give them fluids. If they're hypoxic, obviously you give them oxygen. If their temp is up, give them some Tylenol. If they are in pain... Give them some morphine. You get the idea. Treat whatever the reversible cause is for sinus tachycardia. Now, the other narrow rhythm that we might see is supraventricular tachycardia. And what that means is you have a tachycardia that is coming from above the ventricles, so somewhere in the atrium, but not necessarily from the SA node. Otherwise, that would be sinus tachycardia. And so usually it'll be some other source. And usually it's going to be involving some sort of re-entrant pathway through the AV node. So what happens is you have a signal that comes through here, but then it comes back up again through there again. So it kind of goes around in this cycle. And every time that it comes through, it is sending off signals through the rest of the ventricles, causing them to contract. But you don't have the standard delay that this thing causes, and it's not coming from the SA node. And because it's not coming from the SA node, you're going to notice that there are either no P waves or the P waves look abnormal. So in this case, unlike sinus tach, you're going to have a history which doesn't support sinus tachycardia. Instead, you're going to have some vague history of this sudden onset of the heart rate going fast, of palpitations. And here, these are T waves that I've drawn here. It's hard to draw on here so on this thing, but... It, but I'm just going to tell you, these are T waves, and you'll see that there are P waves that are missing. There are no P waves. It's also possible that the P waves might look abnormal. And the heart rate tends to be pretty constant, because as it goes through this cycle, every time it goes through, it fires off uh, a QRS complex. It just goes through fast, so you're going to have a uh, pretty fixed uh, heart rate. And it tends to go pretty fast. And so if you have a a kid who's tacking away, whose heart rate's going around 230, chances are that's not sinus tack. Chances are it's SVT. So the first thing you can try in your patient with SVT while you're getting your drugs and everything ready are vagal maneuvers. Don't delay any other definitive therapy for these, but if you, while you're getting things ready, you can quickly try these. And some common ones you could do in infants, you could try putting ice on their face. Don't include their airway, but you could put ice on their face. Older kids, you can have attempt a Valsalva, and the easiest way to do that is to have them just blow through a really thin straw. 
And one thing that we typically avoid in older people because we don't want to dislodge a clot and cause a stroke is carotid massage, but in young kids, it, it, it's not an issue, so you could try that too. Avoid ocular pressure because that can damage uh, the kid's retina. And so vagal moves are something you can try while you're waiting to get your meds, and the first med you're going to try is adenosine. Now this is a very fast-acting drug, and it also wears it, you know, uh, breaks down very quickly. So you have to push it in quickly. I mean, super quick. And so you want to push it into the IV, into the connection that's closest to the patient, not this one that's further away, but this one that's con that's closest. And if you can, use one of these uh, three-way stopcocks so you can flush, and you have, and you have one hand on here and one hand on here. So you pump this adenosine in, and then you quickly flush it through so that it just goes in quick. Make sure you block it over here so it just doesn't go up. You want it to go down because you got to go fast because you got to get this drug in quickly. And you remember the doses. The first dose is 0.1 milligrams per kilogram and the second is 0.2 milligrams per kilogram. Now if adenosine doesn't work or if the patient was unstable to start with, shock them. And if the first shock doesn't work, shock them again. Now here are the doses. The first one will be half to one joule per kilogram, and the second one will be two joules per kilogram. Now remember, this is not, this is quite painful. So try to sedate the, the kid before you do this. So unlike pulseless arrest, where you defibrillate someone, here we're going to do something different. It's called synchronized cardioversion. And what that means is you want to deliver the shock on one of these R waves. Because if you were to unfortunately give one of the shocks on top of a T wave, what we call an R on T phenomenon, you could precipitate ventricular fibrillation. So obviously we don't want to do that. But no matter how good your reflexes are, there's no way you could time it manually so that you could give it right on the R wave. Luckily the machine can do it for you. If you push the sync button, on the monitor, it is labeled sync, and then the red light lights up. Then what you'll notice is that the monitor is going to mark all the R waves. And so when you finally do press the button to deliver the shock, it will not give it here. Even if you press it here, it won't give it here. It'll wait until the next R wave and deliver it there. Therefore, you're going to avoid that R on T phenomenon. You're only going to give it on the R wave. So that's how the difference between synchronized cardioversion and defibrillation. Defibrillation can be given anywhere, here or here or here. Synchronized cardioversion only on the R wave. Remember, the first dose is 0.5 to, to 1 joule per kilo. The second is 2 joules per kilo. And if you still haven't broken the tachycardia after the second shock, then they recommend giving either amiodarone or procainamide. You give one or the other, not both, amiodarone or procainamide. And these things have to be infused slowly because they can cause hypotension and various other side effects. And if you watch the video on the drugs, you'll see what those side effects are. And if that doesn't work, you could try a third shock. And if you're still, having, if you're still not getting success at this point, you should be talking to your pediatric cardiologist on what to do next. Okay, so we've come down this branch here. We've talked about sinus tach and SVT. Now let's go down the wide QRS branch to ventricular tachycardia. So ventricular tachycardia can be stable or unstable. And remember stable uh, or unstable means that they're, sh they're in shock, they have a low blood pressure, or they have altered mental status. And when you're treating this stable uh, patients, it might be worth calling pediatric cardiology. Get them on, on the line or down in the ER with you to help you uh, go through all those drugs, because some of them can have some side effects. So the first drug you can use is adenosine, and that's the same quick-acting drug we talked about with SVTs. Now, adenosine could be used to help slow down a rhythm so that you can tell whether it really is VTAC or not. And you know what? It might actually even convert them so they'd go from VTAC to a sinus rhythm. Uh, and just because this happens, it doesn't mean that it was SVT, because remember, adenosine can also convert VTAC. Now, the one thing you want to be careful about is treating Wolf-Parkinson-White with adenosine. Now, I've drawn this kind of blown up here. You can see here's that characteristic delta wave. And if you have Wolf-Parkinson-White and a tachycardia, maybe that starts looking like a VTAC. 
And then you're thinking, hey, maybe I'll give them some adenosine. But what's the danger of that? The danger of convert of confusing WPW with tachycardia with VTAC is that you could cause a super fast tachycardia. Now remember, the the way that the electrical impulses are going to get into the ventricles in WPW is one of two paths. You have through the AV node and you have through this accessory pathway. Now what adenosine is going to do is it's going to block the AV node. And with that block, that means every signal that is going to come flying through the accessory pathway. And so now you could have heart rates around 300, 350, and that is just not compatible with perfusion, and so therefore that is not compatible with life. So we do not want to give adenosine if we have WPW. In fact, you don't want to give any AV nodal blockers, no calcium channel blockers, no beta blockers, no adenosine, because we don't want to block that AV node. That's the only thing that's kind of keeping us from going, having the heart rate go crazy here. So uh, watch out for WPW. So what do you do if adenosine doesn't work? You're going to perform synchronized cardiovergence. So you're going to shock them once at a ha half to one joule per kilo, and if that doesn't work, two joules per kilo. And again, remember, this is not pleasant, so sedate them. And after the two shocks, if it doesn't work, go ahead and try one of these two drugs, amiodarone or procainamide, remembering the same uh, warnings that I gave earlier as well as in the drugs video. So what do you do if a patient is unstable? Well, you just go straight to shock. Don't worry about the adenosine. Just shock them, just like we said. Half to one joule per kilo, that doesn't work, two joules per kilo. And try and sedate them if you can. If they're out of it, maybe you don't need to sedate them. So that's it for the tachycardias. Again, here is our overview. Remember, if we're, we're talking about tachycardia with poor perfusion, but they do have a pulse, you're going to do your ABCs, IVO2 monitor, get an EKG if you can. If they're, if they're narrow, you're going to just start, determine if they're sinus tach or SVT, and if they're wide, you want, they're probably VTAC, and you have to determine if they're stable or not stable. Now here's the actual flow chart that they give you with uh, PALS, and it basically says what we talked about, right? You're going to first do your ABCs, you're going to decide whether they're narrow or wide. If they're narrow, they're either sinus tach or SVT. If they're wide, it's VTAC. And you can determine if they're unstable, just shock them. If they're stable, you can give adenosine and perhaps amiodarone or procainamide. Similarly here, sinus tach, treat the causes. SVT, you could try vagal maneuvers, but don't delay for it. Uh, if you, you know, just if you can do it quickly, go ahead. Otherwise, give adenosine, and if that doesn't work, shocks. Again, you could consider amio and procainamide if that doesn't work. All of your doses and everything are also listed here on the side uh, if you need to refer to it, then that's where they are. Okay, so this was a long video, I'm sorry, but that's the pediatric tachycardias. There's a lot that we went over in here. Okay, see you later.